Hi, my name is Zach, this is Harrison, Hi. and today we'll be taking you through the basics of the abdominal examination. Now there are a number of things you should do before any clinical exam. For brevity's sake today, I'll just say clean hands and consent. Start by taking a good look at your patient from the bottom of the bed. Are there any obvious pain or discomfort, or are they comfortable at rest? Now, ask the patient to cough and see if any sneaky hernias jump out at you. Note whether coughing exacerbates abdominal pain, as this suggests peritoneal inflammation. Next, take a look at the hands for any peripheral signs of hepatic and gastrointestinal disease, and at the patient's face for any ulcers or signs of jaundice. And have a feel just above the left clavicle for Verkhoff's node, a craggy lymph node that can indicate gastrointestinal malignancy. Now we get onto the abdomen itself. Start by having a good look. Notice anything unusual? Pay close attention to any scars, swellings, or areas of discoloration. Now we can have a feel. Pro tip, ask the patient if they're in any pain before you start poking them. First up, check whether the abdomen feels soft or rigid. Now, palpate all nine anatomical regions, quite gently at first, keeping an eye on the patient's face to see if you're causing any pain. Note any areas that are tender. Now we press a little harder, again in those nine anatomical regions. This time we feel for any masses. Be particularly careful of any areas you've already identified as being tender, lest you cause your patient, who quite likes you at this point, any additional pain. Now we move on to the organs. First up is the liver. Begin in the right iliac fossa and, asking the patient to take deep breaths in and out, feel for a liver edge. Imagine the liver descending to meet your hands as the patient inhales. Percuss to confirm, the solid liver has a dull percussion note when compared to the gas field surrounding bowel, and estimate the liver edge in centimetres from the bottom of the ribs. Repeat for the spleen. Start in the right iliac fossa and make your way across to the left hypochondrium. Note any enlargement. Next, block for the kidneys using this motion, placing one hand under the patient and pressing down gently with the other. Remember, most people have two kidneys. Note if either is enlarged. Now for the bladder. Percuss down from the umbilicus, listening for a dull percussion note. In acute urinary retention, the enlarged bladder appears as a painful, dull mass arising from the pelvis. Next up is the abdominal aorta. Feel for a pulse. The pulse should feel pulsatile, of course. An expansile mass suggests an aneurysm. Finish off by listening for bowel sounds for 10 seconds. Note whether they are present, absent, or sound abnormal. In obstruction, bowel sounds are described as tinkling. If you've noticed any gross abdominal swelling or jaundice, you may now like to perform a shifting dullness test for ascites, but this may not be necessary in someone without any abdominal swelling whatsoever. Now you're not finished yet. Your assessment remains incomplete until you've examined the hernial orifices, performed a PR exam and taken a full history. A urine dipstick wouldn't go amiss either. But this is a good place to start. You should now have a list of signs that, combined with the findings of a well-taken history, point you in the direction of a differential diagnosis. Finish by thanking the patient and getting them covered back up. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, found it useful, uh, why not subscribe to our channel? You can do it by uh, clicking that button there. You can see some of the other videos in our series on clinical examination, uh, just below me, just down there. And uh, why not send us some helpful feedback? Till next time.